The goal for today is to find some old cedar buried that we'll use for some slat material. You can see I already did a bit of work here. It doesn't look like much. Usually it's all covered with uh, dirt, needles, and whatever. But if you kind of look underneath, there's quite a bit of wood left. And if you scrape the top off, it's quite solid. And uh, it looks like this old stump here, was uh, that was probably from there. So back in the day when they were doing logging, this was maybe a waste where it broke when it fell. And that's usually what I'm looking for. So I'm going to uncover this a bit more and I'll uh, saw it up into a couple sections. I'm looking for about 32 inches uh, width of slats. So I'm gonna do probably about 34, 35, just as, a, just as a bit of error. And then I'll trim it when it's all nailed down afterwards. So I'm going to uncover this and I'm going to see if this is any good. I got this log cut in half and that is exactly what I'm looking for. This one did split, but this is pretty raw and it looked like it was on fire at one point. But here's kind of the outtake. That's basically best case scenario. There's a lot of good, a lot of good cedar. You can do uh, lengthways ones or you can do multiple this way. So this will work out good. There's a lot of wood here. Basically this whole, there's whole half of this log. The inside had rotted out over the years. But uh, I'll get this cut open, open here and this will give me lots. more, Probably more than enough to do this. One thing to remember too is a lot of dirt. Sometimes you hit rocks and stuff under here. So I happened to put my old chainsaw chain on just because I had a new one and this is pretty rough on them. Uh, it makes a mess and it's, it's a chain ruiner, that's for sure. It's pretty hard on your chainsaw too, so keep that in mind. So I'm gonna buck this up into a couple pieces. Uh, yeah, again, probably about 34 inches long and uh, we'll start ripping some slats. All right, so an hour later, I got these split up in the chunks. I got a three foot section there. I already took this three section out here. I don't know how much this weighs, but this took me a long time to deadlift it out of there. And then I have some more here. I'm thinking this one, this one, and a few out of that will probably get me really close. Um, again, this is pretty thick, so that's a good, that's a good 10 inch. So I should get at least a nine inch slat out of that. So that will be great. But this is, uh, this is perfect. This will work perfect. So what I'm gonna do now, um, looking at this, you can see the grain uh, runs this way. So when you make your slats, you always want to go as perpendicular as you can. Um, cause you want, when you split this, all the grains will actually give you traction, all the edges. I'll show you when I cut it. So in the wet weather, it's a lot more grippy. So a piece like this to have your pieces, I usually lean them up against a tree. Um, they're just hard to handle. And then, uh, we're gonna get the tools. So these three items are really all you need to make some good slats. This is called a fro. I made this one myself, but you can usually get them at woodworking stores. Uh, just a small ax, a hatchet works good. And then I have a two and a half pound mini sledge. So I'm gonna square this log out first. I'm gonna grab my ax and my this little sledge here. And I'm just gonna score the top like this. And then I'm going to grab the fro. You can see where this will come in handy. And I'll just put it along this line here. And I'm going to give it a couple taps. So you can hear the wood cracking. So this is just going to give me my start. So the nice thing about this is it's heavy enough. But I'm going to pull on this, and this should stay still. Work it down a bit. And that will give me the start. See, there's a bit of rod at the bottom, but that okay. That'll be all right, because I'll cut that out. There'll be lots of good, good use out of this one. So this will be, probably be my first usable slat. 
I'm gonna go for roughly two inches. Uh, you don't need to measure it, just eyeball it, but get a good chunk where it's gonna last a long time. So something like that is uh, excellent, I think. And then a lot of the key will be to make all the slats the same thickness. And I'll just make the smoothest service as you can. Now, I'll tug on this. Uh, see, a bit of rot still. So we'll have to go through these and use as much as we can. So this one will just get cleaned up here on the edges. I mean, that's a good five inch slat. And this is, you can see the surface is ribbed. So this will provide lots of traction for the bike tire. So when it's about flush like that, just gonna pull the top. There we go. So that is beautiful. See the, you can see it in the sun here. You can see all the nice ribs, lots of traction. There's no knots in any of this. Uh, the thickness is excellent and it's good looking. This will get cleaned up. So I'll take all this off here, but this is a good, good six inch slat at least. So now the next step, uh, this is a good one to show you. I'm going to kind of clean the edges off. So I want to get a nice square edge here, a nice square edge here. And you can see there's kind of a lot of, a lot of rod on this. So this is pretty simple. I'll just grab my ax here. And then essentially I'll just pick a point where you see the rod stops. And I'll just get one of these. It's just like splitting firewood. And the other side. And that's pretty much a perfect board. So I'm gonna go through this pile, clean these ones up, and then I'll go and lay them out and I'll see how many more I need. I was able to get enough boards cut. So here I have them all laid out to make sure I have enough. So when you're putting these together, you wanna allow for about a finger width of spacing, just for dirt and for water. So for these boards, I'm going to use um, some five inch spiral galvanized nails. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in at this angle and one in at this angle and I'll offset them. And then when I put them in on the other side of the board, I'm looking for uh, a bit of an offset here from the grain. I don't want to put them in the same spot. That'll just help prevent splitting in the future. So I've got all the boards nailed in. So I put two nails 
per side offset. Some of the larger boards took six nails, three per side. So now the next step is I'm going to find the center between the two beams and then I'm going to go about 32 inches so I'm going to go 16 inches out this way 16 inches out this way and then go on the other end and then I'm going to run a string line and that'll be my edge so when I cut these boards I'm looking for about this much overhang so I like to line it up pretty square maybe an extra half inch or an inch I don't want too much too much excess So there is my center mark, so I'm going to measure 16 out, I'm going to put a nail in here. So it's a little wet out, I'm not sure if this string line is going to work or not, but we'll give it a go. That'll work. So we got all the boards done. Got them all cleaned off. And I uh, got my final piece on the end there. So we pretty much got her beat now. Still have a bit of work to do on the approach here. Got to modify this berm so it's nice and smooth. Do a bit more rock work here for the on-ramp but this one turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.